Well, uh, hello everybody. My name is Alejandra Gomez and I will be presenting part of my uh, PhD work, which consists on the environmental life cycle assessment methods for agro-materials or bio-based materials. Um, this is done at the LCA, Laboratoire de Chimie Agro-Industrielle, and uh, Laurie Amna is one of my uh, thesis advisors, so she's uh, participating on this project as well. So the, the, um, the work is based on two case studies, one which is uh, under the name BOPA, and it's a, a small uh, company developing a sandwich panel for an application in the aeronautics sector by using flax fiber uh, as reinforcing reinforcement material uh, in a composite instead of uh, glass fiber. And the second case study, it's under the name uh, Luma, and uh, it consists, uh, it's a project developed by designers uh, that aim to valorize the piece of sunflower stems to be used uh, as panels for acoustic uh, absorption materials. So for the first case, uh, as I was saying, the aim is to produce a composite material, which is a material that is made up from a fiber reinforcement and a polymeric resin. Uh, so this biocomposite material is made from flax fiber and an epoxy resin. And the idea is to compare its environmental performance to a classic composite material, which is made of glass fiber as reinforcement and using an epoxy resin as a polymeric uh, matrix. So uh, the company produced a biocomposite sandwich panel uh, in aim of applying it in the aeronautics sector in order to reduce fuel consumption. This uh, was based on the, on the concept that natural fibers have a lower density than glass fiber and also they store carbon. So this contributes to the delay of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So the main findings of this project is that indeed weight is an utmost critical parameter. Uh, actually the use phase of the composite material was the phase that uh, was attributed in all uh, environmental impact categories assessed over 99% of the impact. And uh, in this case, the, uh, the biocomposite material was less advantageous than the classical one, than the petrochemical one. This uh, given the development stage of the prototype and also the sector's strict regulations, uh, mainly for fireproofing. And this represents the main constraint for the weight reduction in the biocomposite. Uh, this considering a cradle to grave approach. So parting from a cradle to gate approach, uh, meaning not taking into consideration the use and the end of life stage of the life cycle of the biocomposite panel. It was find, found out that the biocomposite panel was more environmentally competitive uh, in the uh, environmental impact categories of climate change and marine eutrophication by 34 and 30% respectively. So uh, it was also addressed the fact that through the use of these bio-based panels uh, to be used as interior fittings in airplanes, meaning uh, trays or baggage compartment, for example, uh, by using them uh, for the, in the next 20 years, the emission of over 75 megatons of carbon dioxide could be delayed. This given the carbon that is stored uh, well, as part of the natural fibers. So future work concerning this project would be to improve the fiber resin ratio and the geometry of the prototype in order to be able to attain the mass uh, quantities of the, the mass value of the petrochemical um, counterpart. So now for the LUMA project, 
This uh, consists, as I was saying, as the valorization of the piece found inside the stock of the of the of sunflowers. So sunflowers are grown um, mainly or only for the obtention of sunflower seeds to be used in, um, for the obtention of oil, sunflower oil. So stalks and other components of the plant are left at the field. It was found that the pith from inside the stalk has insulation uh, properties, uh, specifically for acoustic absor uh, sound absorption properties. And uh, well, this project is carried out by Atelier Luma. And Atelier Luma is, uh, as I was saying, uh, is made up from designers, and it aims to create new and sustainable ways of using uh, the resources of the region. Uh, so this is why they aim to valorize the stocks left at the field. So for these, uh, well, the, the, the process was carried out for producing the peat panels. So here we have the stocks or the, the sunflower stems as they are collected from the field. Uh, then they are processed. Uh, stocks are separated. Peat is separated from the bark part, so the wood part of the stocks. Uh, in order to have a, a pure uh, pith component. And then panels were produced by using starch and uh, ketosan as binding agents. So uh, for these, a uh, test for acoustic absorption of the panels was carried out and it was compared to two, uh, two different uh, panels already existing. One made from cork and another one made from uh, melamine foam. This is the petrochemical um, counterpart. So here we can see that, uh, well, in blue we have, and blue, blue and red, we have the uh, the uh, sunflower peat panels, and we can see that they are sound absorption coefficients. They are high. Uh, for even the low for low frequencies, which is not the case for the other two cases. So this represents a very interesting uh, application for this kind of materials. Moreover, we can see that even uh, the as the melamine foam will has a higher uh, a final um, absorption coefficient. They uh, the the sunflower peat options remain quite competitive uh, when it comes to their capacity for sound. So uh, the next step for these projects is to to for the Luma case we still have to uh, carry out the LCA, but for both cases. We are following a consequential approach, meaning that we are uh, applying system expansion where all code products are, are included in the system boundaries in order to include the fate of these code products in the environmental impact of the final product. And as we're dealing with agricultural systems, we're also uh, well dealing with the issues of land use change and we're including them in the system. And we're also considering the carbon storage potential of these agricultural uh, products. So, well, for more information, there are uh, two articles already submitted for publication. They're under review. They're also going to be published as preprint versions. This is all underway. And uh, these first two articles concern the first case study, BAPA, and the third uh, article is uh, under um, redaction. It's being written for the third uh, case, and it will be also uh, available as a preprint uh, before publication in a, at a journal. So that would be it for my part. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, 